This small robot has machine learning algorithms running on Arduino Uno with the point of autonomously navigating on a racetrack. It was trained manually on a different, much simpler tracks and now we will find out if it works on a larger one and how fast can we go. But in order to get there we will take a look at all the necessary steps from building a robot on a racetrack, collecting and processing data and lastly a final race. Of course as always all the useful links and more information about the project is in the description. That is the prototype and this part is working fine but now I have to connect it with the whole chassis that is of course designed in the ORP concept so it's just built of very simple blocks. If you want to learn more about ORP there's link in the description. Building the robot was most likely the easiest of the tasks thanks to open robotic platform. I grabbed parts I had from building my previous robots and designed some new holders for SD card, motor and breadboard. There was no much CAD work and planning because I could just easily mount everything where I wanted during the assembly and that made everything much easier. In fact wheels might be the most interesting part of this chassis. During the first assembly I used a one-piece smooth wheel printed with PLA. This had almost no traction and pretty sharp edge that could easily scratch the floor. Adding a TPU tire to the wheel is a smart move to increase traction and get rid of any scratching related problems. I did that for a big wheel for the AK80 actuator in the past and pretty cleverly hit the screws connecting the two parts together. I just wasn't sure whether it's possible but it is and it was pretty easy. Also, this matte black flexible filament from Fibrology is just perfect for the tires. Racetrack was an interesting problem to tackle because in the beginning I just wanted to use walls and books, which for plenty of reasons wasn't ideal. Then while packing the orders from industry.cc, I noticed that I have plenty of boxes and with simple 3D printed part, I can use this as walls for my racetrack. It was a very simple design that after a few modifications was super fast to print, which was important as I needed a lot of that. Cardboard was also a great choice as there is no risk in crashing your robot against hard wall and it's pretty easy to create any shape of your racetrack that you want. In order to do any machine learning you need data and usually a lot of data. To collect it I added a Bluetooth module and an SD card to the robot. That way I can manually control the robot with my smartphone and save the data from LiDAR together with current control label on the SD card. When you drive the robot around the racetrack all the time the LiDAR measurements are saved on the SD card together with current control label. There is 240 measurements from the LiDAR in a CSV format and at the very end there is FG or I, that is drive forward, forward left or forward right. The data is saved 5 times every second, so now I just have to drive for long enough, hopefully without crashing, to collect a pretty big dataset. Maybe I look like a kid playing with an RC car, but remember, I'm doing it for research purposes and for science. It's some serious stuff. But do I have a lot of fun? Yes. When the dataset was ready I could start working on processing and training and here I have to admit that maybe for the very first time I'm using knowledge from the university that is actually fun and I do understand why and how it works. Finally something useful after 4 years. For my first experiment I collected data on the circular path while driving clockwise and counterclockwise. The dataset wasn't huge but I wanted to see whether I will be able to properly process all the data. I started with a step that in machine learning is called feature selection. As I mentioned there are 240 measurements from the LiDAR but in reality we don't need all of them. We could easily decide on how to drive with just a few properly selected points and that's how feature selection works. It reduces dimensionality by selecting columns of data that are the most important for proper classification. This step is crucial to get rid of the noise that is present in some dimensions that are not really that important to us but also to make the computation easier for the Arduino board. Fortunately doing that is pretty easy as you can just use select kbest function built into Python library scikit-learn and this will select as many samples as you need. In my case that was 15. There is one more cool thing. I modified the code from my old video so I can play the record from the SD card and then I can easily highlight the points selected with kbest. As we can see the selected points are in front of the robot on the left 
and right. And that makes perfect sense because looking back while driving forward is not really the best idea. Training the classifier is another easy task, thanks to libraries and assuming that you know at least a little bit what you are doing. Here I would like to note that I'm not an expert and there are better ways to do all of that. I'm just learning and experimenting by implementing some machine learning in my projects. For the classifier, I experimented a bit with decision trees, random forest, support vector machines and some more, but random forests seem to perform the best with the accuracy of about 70%, which really wasn't promising. Now all that processing and training was done in Python, but we somehow have to get it working on an Arduino. I found an amazing article that I will link in the description that explains how you can do that. It's super easy and works perfectly. And just like that, it was time for the very first test of the autonomous driving capabilities. This right here will be the very first test of this robot with the classifier. It's Randall Forest. And I haven't even turned on the robot yet, so let's try. It actually works way better than I expected. Look at that. It is able to stay in the track. That is so cool. I was shocked to see it working for the very first time without any modifications and with a rather small data set. I just put the robot in the racetrack and it started working properly and following the path. It was amazing. It was super fun to see that working. The robot was trained on the data set with like both the data from driving clockwise and counterclockwise. So let's switch up and see if it will still be able to drive in the truck. Yes. Let's see. Oh my god, that is so cool. It really works as it should. And let me remind you, it runs on an Arduino. It's not even a computer, it's not NVIDIA Jetson Nano, it does not have Linux, an operating system, it's just an Arduino board. And it is running machine learning, controls, this robot autonomously. I don't know, it's, it's super cool, super cool stuff. But for sure there must be a way to break it, since it was trained only on the circle, probably it won't be able to handle the square. And I was right, but now if we train it manually on the square and extend the dataset with this new data, it should be able to handle even the square. It's data collection time. Training and uploading a new code to the Arduino takes just about two minutes, it's super fast, but definitely the most time consuming part is collecting the data. And just like that, the robot is not afraid of the square anymore. How about figure 8? It is not able to handle the crossing and just goes in a circle. How about some more training? It wasn't working in the beginning, but if you find the sweet spot of the crossing placement, it is actually driving as it should and also seems to perform even better at staying in the lane. But now a real test. Let's build a more complicated test field that the robot has not seen before. And if that works, we'll crank up the speed to see how fast can it go. Here's a new and the final racetrack for this video. We have a very wide and straight section here. Here there is a 180 degree corner, a pretty tight corner there and a narrow section here at the end. Will the robot be able to handle that? I have no idea, but we'll see that in a moment.
Seeing how powerful machine learning is in previous examples, I wasn't that surprised to see that it worked well in a new course. But the real surprise was waiting for me when I started increasing the speed of the robot. In all previous tests and manual driving, these were the settings I used. It's a PWM signal sent to the motors. The lower this value is, the slower the motor rotates. I started slowly increasing it to see what will be the upper speed limit and soon landed on the value of 255, which is equal to 100% fuel of the PWM signal. This robot with these motors just can't go any faster and it still works perfectly fine in the racetrack. This is amazing, surprising and I'm super happy to see that working so well. To compare it, here is the previous speed setting versus max speed. For some reason it does not seem to be so fast on camera, but when you see it live it's crazy how fast and precise it is. In fact, it is so fast that I started wondering whether I will be still able to control it manually via the Bluetooth app with the new speed setting. I wasn't. I just wasn't able to control it while the simple machine learning algorithm had no problems.